Hello and welcome to UAT time within the United Country Special by First Ukraine. You can find us at the frequencies available at our website firstua.com. I'm Sergei Vilichansky. And I am Olivier Vidrin, UAT time dedicated to bring Ukraine and Europe closer to each other by introducing the real Ukraine to the rest of the world. Since the end of 2013, when Maidan started, Ukraine has been in the center of attention for, of all the world. With the events like Crimea annexation by Russia and the war in the east of Ukraine, Ukrainian leadership has sought after European assistance and advocacy in dealing with Russia. And the help comes from different European and other Western financial and government institutions. During the Maidan crisis, we remember the visit to Europe Parla Parliament of Yaroslana Lizhichka, who was not just a singer but a face of resistance. Her opportunity to speak at Europe Parliament session was unprecedented. Today we have a special guest, the President of uh, the European Economic and Social Committee, the President Henri Malos. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. Thank you. And I just want to correct uh, something, uh, if you allow me, that uh, Ruslana Lizhichko came to speak Firstly, not in the European Parliament, but she was invited by me and by Olivier to the European Economic and Social Committee plenary session with José Manuel Barroso, 17th of January. Yes. And we were the first, she was the first uh, leader of uh, Euromaidan to speak in the European Assembly, the Civil Society Forum, in fact. And after that, she was invited, uh, thanks to all uh, support, to some session committee of European Parliament. But the historical truth is that it was in the European Economic and Social Committee, and I'm very proud of that, yes. that she made the announcement and she uh, asked for support and she asked for sanctions against uh, Mr. Yanukovych. And we issued at that date, so 17th of January 2014, a resolution, we the first institution to issue a resolution to ask for personal sanctions against uh, Mr. Yanukev Yanukevich and Yanukevich regime. It's just a correction of the history, so I hope that next time you will you will correct that in your in your in your session. Yes, uh, thank you I, very much. I, I would love that. Thank you very much. Actually, that's why I even uh, started uh, saying yes. about Ruslana mm. because of your being here, mm. because I knew that you were the ones that really initiated her travel, and thank you for that because by doing that. The whole world really started to take seriously but, what's uh, happening. If you allow me, I would just say that uh, I paid the price. Um, Mr. Putin and oh, Mr. Lavrov uh, put me uh, on, on this uh, famous blacklist among the 89 uh, European Union personalities who are banned to go to Russia, which I regret deeply because I have a lot of friends in Russia. Sure. And I've tried all during all these years to keep the contact with the civil, not Mr. Putin, not very interested, but with the civil society of Russia because I think that the, the Russian nation, the Russian people deserve to join the European family like the Ukrainian one. I don't make any difference. It's a pity that uh, they have uh, this kind of regime and uh, this kind of, uh, of uh, nationalistic, I would say, an aggressive approach. But I deeply regret But I always uh, put my arms and our doors open for Russia. I would just say that one of the purpose of my visit here was uh, to, to visit President Poroshenko. I'm still waiting for the for appointment and to uh, express the wish of the uh, European civil society to get the Ukraine closer to the EU in the sense to get as soon as possible a visa-free regime. And our institution, mm -hmm. European Economic and Social Committee, we support the visa-free regime for the Ukraine people. But I will add that two weeks ago I've said that the European Union should also uh, propose a visa-free regime for Russian citizens mm -hmm. because we don't want to punish the Russian people for the bad behavior of a government. It will be wrong because it will be used to make Mr. Putin much more popular in this country and to isolate him more and then to create more tension. And the Open Union project is a project to uh, settle peaceful reglement of conflicts. Mm -hmm. We are not superpower. The European Union is not the United States. We don't want war, we don't want military. We want, we want to, to make the people work together. Yeah, and uh, an another very interesting uh, topic, uh, the crisis in Greece. Um, you did some analysis about uh, this crisis in Greece, and you are quite different uh, with other uh, opinions. 
Uh, what do you think oh, about this different. crisis? <laughs> Quite different, yeah. It's, what do you think about this crisis? No, you, you know, we should come, uh, so it could take some minutes, but we should come to the roots of a crisis. Uh, 2008 was a financial crisis. It has nothing to do with Greece, mm -hmm. with Greece or with Europe. It came from the United States, from a financial bubble, you know. This has, of course, hit specifically the Eurozone for, for one reason, is that the Eurozone has not a real governance. Uh, in the US, you have a Federal Reserve, you have a president, and they can decide. In the EU, you, you saw that for a Greece uh, event, uh, for a Greece crisis, it's very complicated. The decision ta takes a long, very long time. Plus, in the Eurozone, we have a uh, we have a monetary union with the European Central Bank, but we don't have economic union. We have different divergent economic, uh, economic policies. So the result was when the crisis arrives, it hits more Europe, the European Union, the Eurozone, than the rest of the world because of this lack of reaction. When you are in a country, when, when you have a crisis, you're able to, uh, have, to have your own monetary policy, uh, with uh, decrease the value of money increase in the eurozone you cannot because the, the governmental body of the, Euro, of the eurozone are the same for all the countries despite the fact that each country has different economic policy mm -hmm. I think it's it's, yeah, it's it's possible to understand that so when when the crisis hits uh, in 2008 the European Union it hits particularly the weakest country not just Greece it it hits uh, is Ireland Portugal Spain uh, and Greece and Italy. And of course, Greece was the weakest one for structural reasons, which is linked with the uh, political situation, which li linked also with the fact that Greece got a lot of European Union funds and didn't make the best use. If this is due to the fact that uh, uh, Greece has uh, the heaviest link with its uh, GDP military uh, budget because of the border with, uh, with Turkey and conflict with Turkey. All these reasons make Greece the weakest. And uh, as the Greece, as the, when the crisis hits uh, deeply Greece uh, in 2010, uh, the European Union countries uh, were not able to find a solution for Greece. They asked for help for the IMF which is something which uh, I know that IMF is acting in Ukraine too, but which hurts me a lot as a, as a European. Mm -hmm. uh, today you have a very deep uh, financial crisis in Puerto Rico. I think the bankruptcy of Puerto Rico, free state, but member of the United States, is much uh, bigger than the crisis of Greece. But of course the Americans, uh, American government will pay and uh, they won't uh, ask the IMF to intervene. So for, for Greece, we asked the, uh, the IMF, the, the Europeans were unable to solve the problem. And the worst thing, after five years of austerity measures, Troika and the monitoring by the EU of the situation of Greece, the situation has not been solved. Okay. That's it. Because austerity measures had just uh, come to the fact that they have uh, decreased the economy, the GDP of Greece, of 30% increase the taxation of a, of a company, of an enterprise, but it has killed the economy. To save, uh, I will say, the, the Greek baby of the Eurozone, we have almost killed him. No possibility how you can have incomes, how you can have a good, uh, I, th I think too much austerity uh, is not the good solution. Sure. So, okay. and this, the result was, of course, the election of Mr. Tsipras, because the Greek people were fed up yes. with five years of yes. austerity and no result. And I, I, another question. Uh, we are talking uh, in some newspaper, and we can see some news again uh, about that, about the immigration in the Mediterranean area uh, from North Africa, from Syria to Europe. What do you think the policy of the European Union must be uh, with this uh, immigration from those zones uh, in conflict? You know, we should first, uh, again, like for Greece, <laughs> come back to the roots of, uh, of uh, problems. You know, I was, three weeks ago, I was in Lebanon. I mean, Lebanon is a small country. It's uh, 10,000 square, square kilometers. You compare with Ukraine, it's uh, very small. Uh, Four million inhabitants, two million refugees. 1.5 uh, refugees of Syria, Syrian refugees. I'm sorry, this 1.5 million of Syrians are not people who decide to move to Lebanon or some now move to, to Greece or to the European Union just because they, they love to travel. 
because they have no choice, because there is a war there. Yes. Mm -hmm. And who products the war there? Who produces the war in Libya? Who makes all the mess in the Middle East? It's mainly the Americans and the Europeans. I'm sorry, but, 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 but this is the truth. So we have this situation today. Mm -hmm. The majority of people are, are, I would say, escaping this country because of uh, fear of being killed, because of violence, because of poverty. And so the, the real reasons of that is we need to change our policy in the Middle East. We need to change this, I would say, this, this Western arrogance to, to, to tell the people how they have to manage their countries. We have produced the mess. And now, and now we have the results. So short term, of course, we cannot uh, open our border for the 1.5 or maybe more, 1.5 uh, million in Lebanon. There are 4 million refugees of Syria. But some of them, they need to have legal way to arrive in Europe. Because if not, they come in the hands of, of criminals, and you know what happens. Yes. Uh, 4,000 died last year in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, 40 years ago, we were the boat people when, the, when there was the war, the war in Vietnam. All the world organized the rescue of, of the people. Mm -hmm. The UN organized camp. 40 years ago, in the Mediterranean, at some two hours flight from Kiev, People die in the Mediterranean Sea. This is a tragedy. Yes. And I think we should all take a part of the tragedy, but mainly try to solve the conflict in the region. Uh, for that, I think the, I'm very happy that yesterday we could sign the deal, uh, Iran and the, and the US and the European Union could mm -hmm. sign the deal concerning the nuclear, nuclear uh, question, nuclear plan, because I think it could be a way to, at the end, bring peace in the Middle East. So bringing peace in the Middle East, bringing peace in the Israel-Palestine conflict, conflict giving at least, after so many years, a real state in, for, for the Palestinians. Bringing peace in the Middle East will be the best way long term to solve the problem of the refugees. Short term, we have to, wel to welcome some of them with legal, legal ways to avoid to, to let them in the hands of criminals, and in the same time, to support the countries like Lebanon, Jordan, Tunisia, who, are, who suffer very much because the burdens of the refugees, not the European who have it, okay. is the country in the Middle East. Okay. I want to ask another question. What do you think about the sanction against Russia? That this, that this sanction will be efficient or this sanction is at first against the people of Russia and not against the government? Because the government is still running his own business and Putin still running his own business with his group. What do you think about that? You know, I'm personally a victim of sanctions because I've been banned <laughs> to go to Russia. Uh, I, I, I think that long term it's not, it's not a solution. As, as for Ukraine in the time, I think that the personal sanctions to persons are right. Yes. Uh, we have okay. to freeze the assets of the oligarch. Yes. We have to, to ban uh, the oligarch of the people linked with the military, uh, I would say, uh, instruments of, uh, of Russia to come here and to enjoy the billions of euros. Yes. Uh, this, this is useful mm -hmm. because this is a really clear sign to the society. But we should not put sanctions against the people of Russia, because the people of Russia are not, are not responsible, you know, of the political system in Russia. So, and I think we should make a clear difference. This is why I personally think that, mm. of course, uh, we should have a visa-free regime with Ukraine for a long time, because I came here without a visa. And uh, you as Ukrainian, you have to have a visa to come to us. This, this is totally unfair. Yes, and no. I, really don't, no. I really cannot cannot understand why you accept that why the Ukrainian, Ukrainian government accept that. But in the same time, I propose that the European Union should make a sign toward the Russian, specifically the Russian youth, uh, to, 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 to welcome more Russian young people in our European University, to welcome them in a lot of seminar, exchange, uh, summer camp that we organize, in the way to exchange ideas, in the way to stop this nationalist propaganda. In the European Economic and Social Committee, we did uh, two months ago a very interesting report by my, one of my colleagues, Indre, she's from Lithuania, a report against the way to fight against the nationalistic, nationalist Russian propaganda. Mm -hmm. And we think that it's not in making a counter-propaganda. Uh, we should not use the same weapons as our mm -hmm. enemy. But mm -hmm. it's in bringing to, to Russia objective information about the real situation of the European Union problems and also, as I say, in Greece, we don't have to hide the problem, but the reality. And to stop 
to stop. This is the best way to stop to stop propaganda, not by using the same the same the same weapon. And this is, I think, the European Union way to solve conflict. I think by escalating the conflict, mm -hmm. sanctions against sanctions, higher and higher, we will never solve a problem. We should desescalate and make the difference between the government of Russia and the people of Russia. That's why we are doing uh, UAT time also. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yes, and we definitely are not uh, using the term propaganda in our uh, work because that's what we want to just carry the message and, uh, and uh, help people find the, the, have a good choice yeah. of information. Um, Unfortunately, with all the things that are happening in the east of Ukraine and with the Crimea annexation, yeah. annexation, we sometimes don't necessarily pay attention to what is happening in the world. Mm -hmm. Thank you for you know, giving us more information mm -hmm. because there are a lot of issues in many other countries as well. Of course, we as, as mm -hmm. victims of the, uh, you know, the war and things like this here in Ukraine, uh, we are... Uh, right now, very concerned about our million plus uh, refugees yes. from the Donbass area yes, yes, and economical uh, uh, reforms. Way. Are they taking place mm -hmm. or not? Uh, is there a lack of trust towards the government or, or do the people trust the government? Uh, you have come and uh, as I understand, you plan to meet, as, as you have said, uh, with Petro Poroshenko, the president of Ukraine. Uh, you plan uh, on traveling to Odessa to meet uh, yeah. with Mr. Saakashvili and uh, many other um, meetings. So my question is, what is your message right now as you come to meet with such um, people that are making history in this, in this case, in our, in our country? What is your message to them? Okay, my, my, my main message to them is that uh, European Union, Europe, is a matter of values. And uh, the most important uh, goal for the Ukrainian society is uh, to take care about democracy, human rights and democracy in your own country, and social democracy in the way. I think the victory of Mr. Putin uh, should be the, the, should be, what should be? Should be if there are too many social tensions here in Ukraine, if you are not able to fulfill the gap between rich people and poor, if the poorest people become more and more poor, if there is no job, no economic growth, no development, if people have really a, a harder life. So to improve the life, the, the living condition of the people is a priority. But in the same time, it's also to uh, let the democracy, uh, let's uh, organize uh, the, this country, like all the others, I would say, not uh, from the top but from the bottom. I'm very happy that yesterday uh, you approve, they approve uh, this uh, regional reform, the reform uh, and organize soon a regional election. I think it's important to have more democracy at local level in municipality, more autonomy for the region. Of course, we should keep to the federal, to the national, to, to Kiev, the most important, security, foreign affairs, uh, probably education. Yes, but all, yes. the, all the local, local decisions should be taken locally. Uh, give more confidence to the civil society. Encourage the people to participate in the life. Change the, and, and I, I notice here, it's still, it's still the case, change this pyramidal uh, system of uh, this hierarchy that, that nobody dares to take any decision before the boss uh, makes his decision. And change that. Yeah. Yeah, this so piece is the most important to change. In TV station, in the private company, in public administration, with a president, make the, the society more human. Uh, forget about this hierarchy of life. Uh, at uh, for the for the say, decentralization reform, reinforcing the, the role of the civil society, supporting SMEs, uh, dismantling all the monopole and oligopole, including including the oligarch. This reform are the reform for the future of Ukraine. This is what we expect 
from you. Of course, you have a conflict over the East. You have a 1.5 million of people, uh, refugees, which can call them refugees. So uh, this, is, uh, this, is, uh, this is something you have to take care. But the most deep, inform, uh, inform, the most deep important reform are the internal reforms. And these internal reforms, you should not do them for Europe or for us or for the America. Do that for yourself. Yes. for your nation. <coughs> you have to find your own way. And don't uh, just try to copy the German or the French or I don't know, or whatever. Find your own way. But I think personally that, uh, that democracy, is, there is not a Western or Eastern or Middle East or, or whatever. Democracy is the, the aspiration of each person, each person to be considered, to be respected, to be listened. Democracy is, uh, is in our genes. Mm -hmm. We have it in our brain, in our, in our body, in our soul. And so let's, let's make the Ukrainian democracy uh, alive and, and grow at all levels, including in the company, including trade union, including the social life. You know, let's remember when we were on Maidan together with yes. Ruslana. That was the same speech. We, yeah, we talked exactly. like that I with the change. people, say democracy, human mm -hmm. rights, Europe. And we, 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 we underlined the fact that that was for the Ukrainian and for Ukraine at first to find its own way. That was really our message on, on Maidan, message of the president, message of Ruslana, my message. And I am very happy to, to hear that again, and that's very right. dynamic. Well, and I think that's the message that we want to carry on, you know, delivering to the people. Actually, uh, I have traveled a lot, and uh, it's, uh, it really broadens the worldview. You know, when you see how other people live, how other people think, what freedoms they uh, experience, then when you come home, you can't live the same. You really want yeah. to experience the same. You want to have the right and you want to know that this policeman is here to protect you, not to you know, harm you. And, and uh, by, by the way, have you seen the new policeman yet, the new, the, the reform? There is yes, I see, this is very good. This is a very good thing. But this is, this is part of what, yeah. I, what I mean by changing the society yes. from yes. the grassroots, mm -hmm. not from the top. Forget about the top. Yes. The most important happened in village, in municipality, in local. This is the most important thing if you want to change your society. And, and you know that people are taking uh, the, the new police are uh, v with you know uh, open arms. They they are excited about this, so hopefully you know they will uh, confirm that they are doing the right thing. Stay but with us because we will show to you the real Ukraine and we will show the real Ukraine to the rest of the world. Thank you very much. <laughs>